Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have studied about that how can we detect phosphorus in an organic compound as well as how can we estimate the percentage of phosphorus in an organic compound. And similar to that, we are going to detect uh, that how much percentage of oxygen could be present in an organic compound and this is the thing that is we are going to talk about. So let us understand that how can we detect the oxygen that is being present in the organic compound as well as how can we estimate the percentage of oxygen in an organic compound. So now let us start with that. So it is very easy to detect the percentage of uh, oxygen uh, in an organic compound, but there are various methods uh, so as to detect the percentage of oxygen. So for that we have to follow certain kind of steps and those steps are as follows. So for example, if we have an organic compound and for which suppose if we have to detect the percentage of uh, oxygen in it, so that compound is basically is being uh, heated and uh, also in presence of that is uh, nitrogen nitrogen gas. So in this case basically the organic compound whenever it is being heated with uh, nitrogen obviously it will produce uh, oxygen gas. So not only oxygen gas but it will produce other gases also. So the other product could be somewhere it could be other gas product depending on the organic compound which consists of different kind of other elements also. So therefore I have written here that is other gaseous product. But since we are uh, concerned with the percentage of oxygen, so this is the oxygen that has been produced over here. But the thing is we cannot uh, detect the percentage of oxygen directly. Obviously we have to use different kind of method so as to estimate that what much amount of oxygen has been liberated when the organic compound was being heated in presence of nitrogen. So in this case basically the oxygen that has been produced, so what we are going to do is we are going to supply it uh, through that is red hot coke. So in this case basically the oxygen that has been produced it has been uh, passed through a red hot coke and coke is nothing but uh, that is carbon. So whenever the carbon is been basically it has been treated with oxygen and uh, this is what I am showing over here it is red hot coke. So whenever the oxygen is been treated with carbon obviously it will produce carbon monoxide but the thing is uh, it is not been balanced over here so we can balance it. So this is two moles of uh, carbon will uh, react with uh, one mole of oxygen and uh, that's what the uh, one mole of uh, oxygen gas molecule and uh, this is how we could get that is uh, two moles of carbon monoxide. So this is the product that we have got and let me uh, uh, make this as the equation number one because as I have said earlier also that is uh, it requires a multiple steps so as to detect the percentage of uh, oxygen in an organic compound. So this was one of the uh, steps that I have uh, uh, included in this while uh, that is uh, uh, to show that is how can we detect the percentage of oxygen. But here basically the carbon monoxide is being produced and obviously the carbon monoxide is also a, a gaseous product. But uh, again uh, the thing is this carbon monoxide is being treated with iodine pentoxide so as to produce that is carbon dioxide. So let me introduce the second uh, that is the equation and that is also very important to understand that is that is 5 moles of uh, carbon monoxide is basically it is being treated with that is I2O5 that is iodine pentoxide. So as to produce that is uh, that is carbon dioxide. So in this case, we see five moles of carbon dioxide is being produced along with that of that is iodine. So this is the equation that we have got over here, and this is what I am mentioning it as equation number two. So if you observe the uh, equation number one, you'll get to know that is the carbon monoxide that has been produced while uh, reacting uh, it with uh, oxygen with the carbon. So as, uh, that's the reason that carbon monoxide is being produced, and that carbon monoxide. Is again it's uh, treated directly with the I2O5 that is iodine pentoxide and so as to produce carbon dioxide. So now these equations are very much related to each other and how let me uh, let us elaborate this one. Suppose uh, I mentioned the reaction again in this case that is uh, uh, the first case was whenever the two carbon was being treated with that is uh, oxygen so as to produce that is two moles of carbon monoxide and in this case if you observe that that is five moles of carbon monoxide is being treated with that is I2O5 so as to give that is 5 moles of CO2 along with that of that is I2. So here basically I2 is the one that will liberate but we are not concerned with the I2 obviously we are concerned with uh, the carbon uh, the oxygen content and that oxygen content is being present now in, in the form of that is carbon dioxide. So now let me uh, balance this equation as if you observe that uh, the carbon uh, 
oxide uh, that has been produced in the first one, it is basically two moles, while uh, in the, the second reaction, basically five moles of carbon monoxide has been used. So they are not being balanced, so we can balance it by multiplying this equation by five. So what I am doing is I am multiplying this equation by five. I am multiplying this equation by that is two. Because we have to balance the product also as well as the reactant also. So in this case, suppose we will get uh, basically I would write the reaction as uh, this one would be basically 10 moles of carbon. Okay, so I would write it over here uh, directly. That is 10 moles of carbon. Along with that of that is this one would be 5 moles of oxygen. And again, this one would be 10 moles of that is carbon monoxide. And here, since I have multiplied it by 2, so therefore what uh, this one equation will be, this equation will be turned into that is 10 moles of carbon monoxide along with that of uh, that is 2 moles of uh, iodine pentoxide along with uh, that is 10 moles of uh, that is carbon dioxide and uh, 2 moles of that is iodine. So if I will balance this reaction then what I will get is basically this was the uh, product and this is the reactant. Obviously this will get cancelled out with each other. And the only thing that will be produced as a balanced reaction uh, and that is basically 10 moles of carbon plus 5 moles of O2 along with that of that is I would write it here as uh, 2 moles of uh, I2O5 eventually it will give us basically 10 moles of uh, CO2 along with that of 2 moles of I2 so this is the main thing that we have we have to talk about and this is the main reaction that it will occur but uh, since we are talking about uh, the detection now, now let me come towards the how can we detect uh, or the percentage of oxygen over here so that is the main point over here so if you observe then in this case basically 5 moles of oxygen and that is what it was been produced when uh, uh, oxygen that was been produced when the organic compound was being treated with uh, uh, along with the nitrogen and we have heated it so obviously oxygen was produced along with that of the other products so that is the oxygen so that oxygen is basically it is used so as to give us basically 10 moles of carbon dioxide and now because of the help of this equation we could easily find out the percentage of oxygen so let me give you the information of that also so what we have got to know is we have got to know that is 5 moles of uh, oxygen that is O2 it will uh, basically it will use to produce that is uh, we have got to know that is 10 moles of that is carbon dioxide so this is what we have got so ultimately we could write uh, the equation in this manner also that is uh, 5 moles of uh, O2 eventually it will give that is uh, 10 moles of uh, CO2 or else we could write it in this manner also that is uh, 1 mole of oxygen is basically it is utilized or it is being uh, used to produce that is uh, uh, we would say that is 2 moles of carbon dioxide so this is what we have got to know uh, while uh, studying the previous reaction that we have got uh, we have analyzed in that case so what we could say is basically uh, Suppose uh, the carbon dioxide uh, that has been produced and because of that only we could estimate uh, the percentage of oxygen. So eventually we could write uh, the equation as, as uh, if uh, I have mentioned over here that is 2 moles of uh, CO2 has been produced. So in this case 2 moles of carbon dioxide has been produced. So I could uh, say that is uh, ultimately in the form of that is molecular mass that is uh, 88 gram of uh, CO2. Because if we talk about that is one mole of CO2, then it is basically 44 gram. So therefore, what I have uh, chosen is basically two moles of CO2. So therefore, 88 gram of CO2 it will produce or it will be produced because of that is one mole of O2 and one mole of O2 has a molar mass of that is 32 gram. So this is what we have. And uh, suppose uh, in this case, suppose uh, what we have to do is we have to calculate the mass of uh, carbon dioxide, and because of that only we could. Uh, uh, get to know that is what is the percentage of oxygen. So I could write it as suppose if we have considered that is M1 gram of carbon dioxide has been produced. So therefore I could say that is if M1 gram of uh, carbon dioxide has been produced, obviously that uh, it is produced because of that is suppose what I can do is we can do a cross multiplication in this manner. So therefore it will uh, be produced because of if the organic compound consists of that is 32 into M1 divided by 88 gram of Oxygen. So, if this much amount of oxygen is been uh, present, that is, this much amount of oxygen is been present, then only we will get that is M1 gram of uh, carbon dioxide. So, this is what uh, we have uh, ultimately we have utilized the oxygen uh, as well as we have also utilized the carbon dioxide in a calculation 
so as to get the percentage of uh, oxygen. So this is what we have got to know about uh, the gram of uh, oxygen that has been produced. But what we have to do is we have to analyze the percentage. So for that, suppose what we can do is it is a very simple equation that we have already in our previous one. Also, suppose if we have considered that is uh, uh, the uh, gram of the compound, the organic compound that we have uh, chosen. Uh, suppose if that is the that is m gram. So suppose that is uh, the weight of organic compound. Suppose it is uh, that is uh, m gram. And because of the m gram, and we have uh, uh, that is we have reacted with oxygen, then we get this m1 gram of uh, that is uh, uh, carbon dioxide. So eventually, we have ultimately we have got to know that is what is the amount of uh, oxygen that we uh, uh, that is we consume, so as to be that is m1 gram of uh, carbon dioxide. So eventually, suppose if we have to determine the percentage of uh, oxygen, so it is a very easy, easy task. That is what we have is we have that is. Uh, we have got to know that is 32 into M1 divided by 88 gram of oxygen it will be produced or it will be required uh, if uh, so as to produce that is M1 gram and that is uh, the total weight of the organic compound it is got to be M and what we have to do is we have to multiply it by 100 so as to get the uh, percentage of oxygen and this is the final equation that we have and because of this calculation we could easily estimate the percentage of oxygen. So let me recall this uh, formula again, that is, in this case, basically, M1 is nothing but uh, the amount of carbon dioxide that is being produced. And uh, in this case, the M is basically the uh, weight or the amount of the organic compound. And because of this calculation, you could easily estimate the percentage of oxygen. So that's it. This is what I want to mention about. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have got to know about the various uh, concepts behind it. That how can we estimate the uh, percentage of oxygen that is uh, indirectly with the help of carbon dioxide? So, thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you will share this video with your friends and yes, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.